TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Palestinian rocket fire from Gaza toward Israel's southern communities draws in response IDF retaliatory airstrikes. The IDF and U.S. Central Command conclude their largest joint military exercise in history. The International Atomic Energy Agency acknowledges that Iran has enriched enough material for several nuclear weapons. Hostilities between Israel and the Islamist Hamas and Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad exacerbated overnight following the deadly clash yesterday in which IDF, ISA or Shin Bet and Border Police Special Operations Forces battled with a Palestinian Islamic Jihad cell in Jenin, killing at least nine of its operatives. Consequently, following pledges for revenge, Islamist Palestinians in the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip indiscriminately launched two barrages of rockets toward Israel's southern communities. The first barrage of rockets was launched at midnight, including three projectiles, two of which were intercepted by the IDF's aerial defense array, while a third exploded within the territory of the Palestinian enclave. Subsequently, at approximately 3.30 a.m., another barrage of rockets was launched, including three projectiles, two of which were once again successfully intercepted, while a third exploded in an uninhabited territory within Israel. And while the trajectory of rockets triggered rocket alert sirens in a number of civilian communities, forcing tens of thousands of Israelis into bomb shelters within 15 seconds' time, thankfully, no injuries were reported. Meanwhile, in a retaliatory response, IDF fighter jets targeted a number of military installations belonging to the Islamist Hamas, including a subterranean rocket manufacturing site and a military base, both of which are known to contribute to efforts by Hamas to prepare for a future confrontation with Israel. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu held an extensive security situation assessment, following which he made clear that while Israel is not seeking escalation, he has instructed the security forces to prepare for all scenarios in various sectors in order to safeguard the citizens of Israel. Moreover, Premier Netanyahu also seized the opportunity to express his appreciation for the bravery and resourcefulness of the soldiers who thwarted the terrorist attacks that could have cost many lives in reference to the counter-terror operation that effectively eliminated nine operatives of the Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad in Jenin. It is important to know that in addition to the nine killed terror operatives, one Palestinian civilian has reportedly lost his life in the deadly exchange of fire. The IDF spokesperson's unit said that it is aware of the reported civilian casualty and highlighted that it has launched an investigation into the reported incident. Meanwhile, in the West Bank city of Ramallah, the Palestinian Authority held a press conference following the Israeli counter-terror operation in Jenin, during which a senior advisor to Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas announced that it has decided to retaliate against Israel over the deadly activity by immediately suspending all security coordination with Israeli security forces. It is important to know that the Israeli defense establishment responded to the announcement by re-emphasizing the importance of the security coordination with the Palestinian Authority. In tandem, the IDF also announced that it deployed additional troops to the West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria to ensure a heightened state of preparedness in the event that the situation would escalate. Nevertheless, according to a senior Palestinian Authority official who spoke to TV7 on condition of anonymity, prospects of implementing the announced termination of security coordination is highly unlikely. The official stressed that the Palestinian leadership understands full well the benefits of the coordination mechanism, and while the announcement was made, a decision to implement would ultimately be up to the Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. Meanwhile, in Washington last night, prior to the rocket fire that was directed toward Israel, 
The U.S. State Department called on both Israel and the Palestinian Authority to work toward de-escalation. We are aware of the reports that today in Jenin, at least 10 Palestinians, including militants and at least one civilian, were killed and over 20 injured during an Israeli Defense Force counterterrorism operation against a Palestinian Islamic Jihad cell. We recognize the very real security challenges facing Israel and the Palestinian Authority and condemn terrorist groups planning and carrying out attacks against innocent civilians. We also regret the loss of innocent lives and injuries to civilians and are deeply concerned by the escalating cycle of violence in the West Bank. I want to underscore the urgent need for all parties to de-escalate, to prevent further loss of civilian life, and to work together to improve the security situation in the West Bank. Palestinians and Israelis equally deserve to live safely and securely. The State Department's deputy spokesman was further asked about the joint U.S. Central Command and IDF military exercise Juniper Oak 23, which concluded yesterday whether it aimed to prepare for a military confrontation with the Islamic Republic of Iran amid suspended negotiations related to the 2015 nuclear agreement or JCPOA. So we have uh, been quite clear for quite some time that the JCPOA is not on the agenda, and it is not on the agenda uh, because of the Iranian regime. The Iranian regime killed the opportunity uh, for a swift return to full implementation of the JCPOA in September uh, when they turned their backs on the deal that was on the table. And since September, our focus has been on standing up for the fundamental freedoms of the Iranian people and um, countering Iran's deepening uh, partnerships with Russia and its support of Russia's uh, barbaric and unjust war in Ukraine. On the specific piece about joint exercises, I will let my colleagues at the Pentagon speak to that specifically. It is worth noting that while the Pentagon did not explicitly mention Iran in its statement, it listed all of the tools which were utilized in the joint U.S.-Israel military exercise which have directed toward the Islamic Republic's military and nuclear installations, it would undoubtedly incapacitate both arms of Tehran's capacity to act in an effective manner. This exercise was the largest U.S.-Israel partnered exercise in history. Juniper Oak integrated U.S. and Israeli fifth-generation fighter assets, the USS George H.W. Bush Carrier Strike Group, command and control elements, rescue and refueling aircraft during a long-range, large-force exercise that included live-fire exercises with more than 140 aircraft and roughly 6,400 U.S. troops alongside more than 1,500 Israeli troops participated in the exercise. Meanwhile, on board the USS George W. Bush aircraft carrier, IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Hiltzi Alevi highlighted that both Washington and Jerusalem see eye to eye the threats in the region. Israel and the U.S. share the same values. The IDF and the U.S. CENTCOM see eye to eye the threats on this area. Juniper Oak 2023 exercise has raised our level of planning and level of implementation of combined operations. Israel knows how to defend itself, but it is always good to have our best partner here with us and to learn one from each other. This interoperability strengthens our ability to cope with a range of security challenges over the area. I would like to express my great appreciation to CENTCOM commanders and soldiers who were with us this week, and especially to General Kurila for a wonderful partnership. We were good, we are getting better. CENTCOM Commander General Michael Kurila, for his part, praised the operational success of the joint military exercise while further highlighting The U.S. Central Command's effective ability to deploy large forces to the region very quickly in response to any crisis. What we are seeing here this week is a display of CENTCOM's ability to move large number of forces into the region in the air, at sea, and on land, and operate in all domains to include space and cyberspace very quickly 
in response to a crisis. And we can do so on behalf of and alongside our partner forces. It is important to highlight that while the West under Washington's leadership is gradually holding Iran accountable for its brutal crackdown of widespread public protests in Iran over the regime's suppressive policies and its support for the Russian Federation in its war in Ukraine, there is little to no activity being conducted in relation to Iran's race to a nuclear weapon, which earlier this week IAEA Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi acknowledged in an address to the European Parliament Subcommittee for Security and Defense and Committee on Foreign Relations that the Islamic Republic has successfully attained enough material for a nuclear weapons arsenal. One thing is true, they have amassed uh, um, enough uh, nuclear material for several nuclear weapons, not one at this point. You remember that it was to be this issue of the breakthrough and uh, Mr. Netanyahu drawing, draw, uh, drawing uh, uh, things at the UN and putting lines. Well, that is long past. They have 70 kilograms of uh, uh, uranium enriched at uh, 60 percent, 1,000 kilograms, and I think you were reminding us of that, um, at, at 20 percent and more, etc. So the amount is there. That doesn't mean they have a nuclear weapon, all right? That doesn't mean they have a nuclear weapon. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to continue encouraging you, pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and God willing, we'll see you again on Monday at the same time.